Welcome to the Innovators Insider Podcast. My name is Mike LaFleche, also known as The Professor. And with me is Richard Doyle, the user group guy. How the heck are you? I'm doing great, Michael. How are you today? I am just doing wonderful here from our fab fantabulous Seaport headquarters in Boston, just uh, from the podcast studio. Hopefully it sounds good. Sounds good? Yeah. Sounds great to me. And uh, of course, I'm out here in Las Vegas in my home studio where we finally have seen some sunshine. We've had some rain and hail over the last couple of days. And frankly, it was great getting online with some company company meetings today because it was the first time in three days I've seen people. So <laughs> yeah, that was that really was great. Good. Yeah, we, we don't leave the house here when it's raining and cold and hailing, so. <laughs> uh, but it's Vegas, good to be so that's pretty interesting yep. yeah <laughs> but it's good to be back and what a show we have today we have a great show today uh it involves on shape it involves tom hanks it involves inventions it involves youtube videos all kinds of great stuff and our guest today is somebody that i actually met many many years ago i first met ben Eady in 2007 uh, we were at a, a CAD conference at the time, and it was a get together for a group of bloggers uh, that I used to help support back in the old days. I, I remember a list of bloggers. Yep, yeah, that yep, was. Uh, we all was met at yeah. a uh, a little restaurant called Mulatti's, uh, right across from the convention center. I remember that. I remember it for a bunch of reasons. Number one, it was the first time I got to meet a lot of these folks, including Ben. Uh, but number two, it was the first time I got to use my company American Express card to actually oh, do something, freedom. you know. And so what I did at the dinner was I bought a couple of trays of appetizers, big trays, like $50 a piece. And I was so nervous the next day I went to my boss and uh, and I told him what I had done, you know. And he looked at me and shook his head and I thought immediately I was in some kind of trouble. And he said, Richard, you should have just paid for the whole dinner. <laughs> so I guess I learned a lesson there. So I'll tell you what, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen him in person, and we're glad to have him here. Let's welcome Ben Eady. Hi, Ben. How are you today? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Fantastic. Yeah. It's funny how you, uh, you you don't realize, you don't know what you don't know. And as you get through through work in a new industry, how your boss will end up looking at you and going like, why are you still talking to me? Why do you not just do it? And like credit <laughs> card's a good example. Like you got to learn what you're allowed to and what not to do. And it's, it's always funny finding out uh, how, how out of touch you can be with a new, with a new job. <laughs> well, and, and, and frankly, I've got to give a shout out to, to Greg Jankowski because he yeah. was that kind of boss, you know? Um, and, and I did learn over the, the course of a few years what I could do and what I couldn't do and what I should do and what I shouldn't do. And that was really yeah. important. Uh, and he was one of the best managers I, I ever had. Great guy. I uh, still keep in touch with him. So yeah, uh, no, he hope he's listening guy, today sure. and, and got that little shout out. So. Yeah, totally. So why don't we, why don't we uh, get started things here? Mike, uh, I think you probably want to kick things off, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I've been looking forward to this for the last few weeks, Ben. I'm I mean, not. I'm uh, getting grilled by the professor. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'm going to be easy on you. Don't worry. I'm not going to. Don't, don't worry. But but I'm really excited because you've done so many cool things. You, you've touched so many things that you, you might not have even realized required like mechanical engineering. Like oh, yeah. when you're watching a movie, you're not totally thinking about mechanical engineering but there's tons of real life props it's not all digital right you know mm -hmm. so so I, first of all ben how, how did you get in to the world of cad and engineering like go way back if you want like i i started way back in sixth grade when i told ah. my story but you don't have to go that far but you know how'd well, you get in into this stuff you know, um, I can okay, I can go back to childhood as well. I remember a very day where, like, I was huge into like aircraft and stuff as a kid. I'd always make model airplanes and paper airplanes, and completely obsessed. And uh, so I remember my older brother at the time. So I was probably 12, 13, and he was like 20 something at the time. Come from a fairly big family, and he looked at me and he goes, "You're going to be an aerospace engineer." And it was just this. It it hit and and, and it landed, and you know. It took a long time for me to get there, but I did get there. And so fast forward, you know, military and trying to earn enough money to go to college and all that kind of stuff aside. Um, I, I decided after a while I was working from one engineering company to the next. I was kind of getting bounced around um, and it was it was frustrating. I, I didn't quite understand why, but then I realized that a lot of these companies just needed some piecemeal work. They needed somebody to come in, be able to adapt and, and figure stuff out. 
So that being said, I figured, okay, well, I'll, instead of doing this, getting hired for companies, let me try it as a consultancy. And in around 2000 or so, I decided to just kind of break out on my own. And yeah, um, I really didn't look for work after that. And, and part of that was, is I started doing CAD tutorials online. And because I was doing CAD tutorials online, people would see that I could do something. They would call me up and go, I see you can do this X, Y, Z, you know, thing with sheet metal. I'd be like, yeah. And they're like, good. So you can do that for us. And I'm like, the video teaches you how to do that. Right. And they're like, well, yeah, but you showed us that you can do that. So you can do it for us. Right. And I never really had to look for work just by putting videos out there. And um, because of that, you know, it was effectively like a blog. And because of the blogging, you know, I went to a bunch of conferences, got invited to speak. And every time I spoke, I get more clients. So it worked out really well that way. It was sort of like, you know, you, you show off a little bit and you be that kid outside going, hey, look at me, look at me. And it, it paid off. Um, so fast forward to what, 2015, 2016, or 2015. And um, a friend of mine at a makerspace I, I usually go and hang out at makerspaces and stuff. And if you don't hang out at makerspaces, you should, because it should. has nothing to do with the tools. It has nothing to do with the, uh, what you have there. It has everything to do with the brain trust, because I've never walked into a makerspace with a problem and walked out without a solution. Every time I still to this day use it. Um, that aside is that, uh, um, Janet Mater, one of the people at the makerspace said, you know, we're working on a movie here in town and it was the Revenant being filmed in, Cal in Calgary. And she said, like, but my boss is talking about this big job and he needs an engineer. Do you mind if I tell him that you're, you might be looking for something? And I said, sure. Next thing I, I was on the phone with this guy and, and he's like, well, you know, send me your resume. And I kind of laughed and I said, well, I haven't had a resume in good lord like you know 15 years but yeah okay i'll put something together and he's like okay so do an interview and before it ended he's like i'm gonna fly you out to vancouver you're gonna start working for me and i was like well what show and i gotta clean up you know my clients and stuff and and he's like i really don't care how much it'll cost if i have to buy out your clients let me know and give me the numbers and and we'll work something out and i'm like okay and literally that following monday i'm flying to vancouver i land and, you know, I'm, I'm a nerd. I, I love you know, sci-fi and stuff like that. So I land, I get to the office, sit down in his office and he goes here, sign here. So I sign a sheet and he's like, so you're working for Star Trek Beyond. And I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> just, just completely lost my, my veritable you know, poop at that point. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, and from there, you know, they, they, Gave me a couple sort of like little trial things to work for special effects, some um, some mechanical problems, and they weren't much of a problem. And then, um, you know, the big job landed, and that was two of the largest rotating sets ever made for movies. Um, and yeah, what a ride! You know, something that I would have considered a four-year design cycle for, and to make sure that safety and everything was done, um, we did it in three months and had it built in four. <laughs> wow. It was just you know, something, something else. And, you know, ever since then, I, apparently I did a good enough job there and made the right contacts. And now I seem to be just doing the engineering kind of stuff in film. And that's kind of where I've landed. Um, every so often I get these phone calls from uh, people that completely baffle my mind on why they're calling me. Like, you know, uh, a while back I worked on Ghostbusters and and, uh, and Adam Savage was building a prop for it. So I was kind of in charge of all the Ghostbusters stuff, like the proton packs and ghost traps and PKE meters because of all the mechanical stuff inside. But they figured, okay, well, nobody wants to take this death whistle. So you can take it and here, you know, give Adam a call. And I was Adam who? And Adam Savage. I'm like, ah, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, Engineer's dream, yeah. Yeah, and... and when we met and, and hung out, we actually get along really well, which is like beyond just meeting somebody, it's like a hero of yours uh, to find out that, you know, you get along quite well. And, and a little later on, he asked me for my number and we, we stay in contact to this day. And uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. I honestly don't know what I've done to deserve this, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so no. mechanical design in movies, though, is, is it, it seems like there's still... A market for this like there oh, it's yeah. not all digital there's lots of real life mechanical neck like like what was some of the more interesting things that you've uh made if you can share you know um 
one of the most recent things that I've done was one of the smallest but technologically challenging ones is uh, we were asked by Netflix to make a, uh, so Wednesday Adams, you have thing, the hand, the, the disembodied hand that runs around. They wanted a radio controlled version of that, that they could jump scare people with on New York streets and LA streets. So it's not in the show. It's only in the advertising. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we went around and did that. But to work out a mechanic system that can take your fingers and make them move forward and be able to steer it somewhat, eh, we could have worked a little better on the steering, but everything's a, a tight time crunch. So you, you, you define your goals. And then if you can put the extras in, you do that at the last minute. So, um, but that, that was probably technologically the really coolest thing. Um, other things are, you know, something as simple as throwing an LED in something to blink at a certain time when somebody presses a button, you know, it's, it's a lot harder than you think sometimes. And I've discovered some, some new systems that allow me to literally just drop something in change the color and make all that happen. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of those be open to the world and keep innovating, keep looking at what's coming up and, and what's coming out. Like when I first started with with uh, Star Trek Beyond, you know, metal 3D printing was like, you know, a dream. And and now I, on a regular basis, use metal 3D printing and, and CNC stuff to, to build stuff where, you know, you get all this really cool stuff. So I guess yeah, that's yeah. less than 10 years ago, right? I mean, the yeah. technology yeah. has jumped so quickly to... to... Do you use other uh, additive manufacturing technologies in, in this? Name it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm looking for the fastest way out of a problem every time. And I think one of the advantages I have is that the, like in any industry, you have a lot of the old school guys and the old school guys, they have super amounts of talent, super amounts of knowledge, but um, everybody's afraid to do something new and totally understand if you're in a time crunch and you know, you can get this done in this amount of time you don't have time to think maybe if I try 3d print versus going and just machining it in the shop. Um, I'm the guy who looks at this and goes, well, even if I fail at the 3d print, I've got, you know, over 48 hours, I got three tries to make this work. So I'll, I'll give, you know, a little probe into whether this will work for the project or not and go. The other guys aren't like, I can work in a shop. Um, not very well. I'm not a very good machinist, but I know how to do it. And, but these guys are awesome machinists, but they don't have the talent that I have as far as uh, computer aided design is like, it literally is my superpower in this industry because I can figure out 80% of the problems digitally. I can 3D print and get stuff out faster than they can machine it. And then, you know, the ironing out of the last 20%, I usually can be like, you know, I've been given jobs where they they go, you've got a month to build uh uh, an arm for a scanner on a predator for not the last predator, but the second last predator. And they, they gave me a month to do this. I had it done by the end of the week, ready to go all shiny and ready for set. And wow. they were baffled. And that was just because I had things like on shape. Okay. Okay. So you are using on shape to, to build these movies. Star parts. Trek beyond I was on the beta testing and it wasn't even released yet. And I was using it. And I'll tell you what my boss at the time, blew him away at some of the stuff I would do. Like, um, I think the biggest thing is, is with Onshape, the using an iPad or an iPhone is if I'm on site and I'm looking at something and you're always taking notes on what needs to change and what you need to do to your 3D model. Now you get back to your office and you're gonna lose context with what that note actually meant. And you will have forgotten a couple of the dimensions and you'll be frustrated as hell versus you put the phone down beside you. You take the measurement, you input it into the 3D model. You take a couple little notes and then you go back. And because it's parametric, you bring up the drawing, you refresh it and you print and you're good to go. That kind of workflow is unheard of. Even like I know it's not new anymore. Like, well, 10 years, it's it, it's not new ish to us, but it's new to a lot of other people. So when they see this, their, their jaws just hit the table because they, um, I don't think they understand how much context you can lose. And, and because I'm a nerd, I always have an iPhone or iPad or something on me. So I can always make the edit and I can always capture an idea. Like, um, you know, I've, I've been to some places where I'll take a picture of a machine, I'll go home. And because the picture is like almost a three view, take those screenshots, throw them into, into the CAD system, trace and make something up and, you know, modify it for my uses later. Like it's, I, I can't, I can't say enough about this. 
have you tried the new augmented reality modes on the iPhone and iPad yet? You got to give it a shot. I have. So um, the Fraggle Rock, um, when I was working on that, they wanted to see what certain things would look like in on set. And there, you know, we had a couple of model builders building up mock-ups. I'm like, don't waste your time on the mock-ups. Keep making some of the parts that we need for the final thing. And they're like, yeah, but we need to show them. And I'm like, just, just wait. So I'd go on to set and, you know, the little doozer crawlers, the, the, oh, yeah. the truck vehicles. So we, I, I took the model that I had of that and I had the uh, producers and everybody of the DOP come in and say, Hey, look at the phone. This is what it's going to look like on set. And they're like, you know, they look at the phone. They look at the set. They look at the phone. <laughs> they look at the set. They go, how the hell? And they like shake the phone. So you shake the phone. It would track properly, but they were just completely blown away. Yeah. So, and you can solve so many problems. Like they're like, well, what will it look at this angle? So you can do that. Lighting isn't necessarily going to be correct, but you know, we're getting there. You know, I, I'd love to be able to take a shot of what I, where I, a dome shot of where I am on set and have that light my models so that they match the environment it's in. You, you know, you can send do that, that to, your, to your tech guys. I know that's a very, <laughs> that's, that's an outlier thing. I well, totally get we can't that. do that in yeah. augmented reality, but we can do that in our render studio. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the render studios is not fast enough, you see. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you want it to be like instant on demand, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, the rendering doesn't have to be perfect, but the lighting on the object should match the environment. And I think that would that would sell so many things. Nice. But like, you know, look at the volume they're using in the Mandalorian and stuff. That's, uh, you know, it's very similar kind of systems. So mm. it's getting there. I know it's coming. I just want it now. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, before we move on to the other project that we're going to talk about, I'd like to revisit just just quickly um, your, your work in movie sets. And, and one of the questions I had was obviously you're given some specs or, mm -hmm. um, you know, some sort of some sort of um, uh, upfront. Here's what we want. But are you given some creative license when you're creating some of these things, knowing that these aren't going to be real products in yeah. a sense? They're real in science fiction. <laughs> so do they give you any kind of latitude to add some of your own little flair to it? You got to be careful with that. If you're coming new into the industry, you do as you're told and only as you're told until they trust you. And that can be very long for some people. And so you can burn a bridge very quickly and never work in the industry again by doing that. However, um, after a while and, and people have trusted you, I've, I've been given license to. I waited until I was told I could do whatever I felt like. You know, I, um, Jason Reitman uh, for Ghostbusters is a few times where he said, what do you think would fit here? And I'm like, I go into the description. He's like, yeah, that's good enough. Just do it. <laughs> so it's like, okay, cool. And so yes and no, there are some flare things. There, there's a lot of um, like say the proton packs in, in uh, Ghostbusters, at least Phoebe's proton pack. Um, there's, there's this little feature and people were noticing this little piece of electrical tape along the hose and it was unintentional, but like at one point in time at the very beginning of the shoot, I think it was the second site that we were at, we were asked to bring the, the proton throwers for the Ecto-1. And the problem I had was I didn't have any, but I had the pack. So I literally went and cut off one of the, the pieces, stuffed it into the car so it would look right so they could take the shot and took it out. And then I taped it back on. Effectively, like I spliced the the thing, but there was a gap. It didn't look right, so I did some electrical tape on it. But then I have to retrofit all the other other packs to to look like this. But this is a little detail where people are like, "Oh, you came up with this," and it's like, "Well, yeah, it's it's more a bend screw up thing, and I'm not <laughs> necessarily gonna brag about it." But <laughs> you did what you but, had to do to get the job. Yeah, exactly. You know, um. Onset MacGyver is is something that everybody needs to be in the in in the movies for sure. Like you look at a problem, you got to fix it, but then you have to think back, like retroactively, how much have we shot with this piece, and do I have to go and like beg for forgiveness because the VFX guys are going to have to go in and put a little label on everything in the past? And oh, yeah. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, didn't recognize your um, Dreadmaker Roberts as a. Uh, uh, kind of a, uh, uh, you know, I know where that comes from the princess yeah. bride movie, I think. Yeah. Right? yeah. Right. Yep. Very clever. Very clever. All no, right. Let's, you. uh, let's, let's, Ben, let's talk about Tom Hanks, Adam Savage and Wilson, if you will. So uh, a little while ago, it was taking a little bit of a break. So when you work in movies, you'll do six, eight months at a time, sometimes like a year, but 
movies will fatigue you like nothing. I don't think I know anybody that can do more than two movies back to back without like literally starting to lose their minds. So I was in between a couple of shows and just taking a break. And, you know, I, I was kind of enjoying hanging out with the family and, and um, Adam gave me a call and he's like, yeah, you know, I, I need, I need somebody to build one of those sphere robots. And I'm like, okay. And he said, you think you can do it? And I'm like, well, I haven't done it, but I'm, this is what I do. I can figure it out. And he's like, perfect. I'm going to, I'm going to give your, push your name off to somebody else. And, and, uh, and they need a robot. And I'm like, okay. And literally a few minutes later, my phone rings and it, it says Tom Hanks. And I'm like, no, if you hear him talk and you instantly, you're like, yeah, that voice is very unique. I'm just like, holy crap. <laughs> and uh, so he, he came to me and he said like, no, I, here's, here's the, the spiel. I want to, uh, to go throw the first pitch for the Cleveland guardians. It's uh, the name change and it's the season opener. And, you know, we would just want to make sure everything works well. And he goes, my idea is, is that we bring Wilson on, with with me and I, I put him beside me on the mound and Wilson rolls off and I go pick him up and I put him back on the mound and he rolls off again and I scold Wilson and Wilson comes alive and suddenly he's a petulant child running around and I'm like I love this and totally I can do this and so yeah the deal was struck and next thing you know is I'm I'm building one of these guys <laughs> oh wow yeah so it, it's it's one of those where yeah, people notice what you can do and, and they reach out. And I'm finding more and more, I'm less working on full productions and more going into the specialized pieces of productions like building robots and stuff like that nobody else can. Um, there's a little bit more money into it, but at the same time, a lot more responsibility in it, a boatload more stress. So, yeah. Well, we actually we actually have a clip of um, Tom Hanks throwing awesome. out the first pitch uh, along with Wilson. So uh, I guess we could go ahead and show that now, huh, Mike? Yeah, let's do it. All right, load the film up. Uh, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the showroom floor cutting. Film. One of those one of those things. Richard doesn't know how to how to present the right thing. Well, the other thing too is you're on a computer and time slows when you're working on this stuff. It totally does. Yeah. All ah, right, here we go. Tom Hanks is going to throw out tonight's ceremonial first pitch. Larry Doby Jr. is with him. He's going to catch that ceremonial first pitch. And how about Tom Hanks? He's got Wilson with him. Yeah. <laughs> From Castaway. Here's one thing is that there was one cameraman. Junior. And the audio guy knew what was going on. No one else knew what was going on. Oh, wow. And now Tom Hanks, who began his... Why don't you go ahead and describe what's going on? <laughs> we don't need that extra sound. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to walk over it, but like... No, 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 no. I, I should have I should have knocked the sound off to begin with. Oh, no, no, no. That's okay. So, yeah, like when we're doing this, the uh, a lot of the guys... Um, like, there's one camera guy that knew what was going to go on. You know, the owner and the people that, that you know, got Tom to come in and do this knew what was going on, but no one else did. So you can hear the announcer when he's talking about this. He's like, is that what's going on? Is that a robot? <laughs> or he kind of jokes. And he says, I think that's a robot. Thinking just kind of being flippant. It was like one of those weird anomaly things. Then he realized it was exactly what he said. So it, it's kind of funny hearing them talk when you when you look at it afterwards. Oh, yeah, this is great. Yeah, there it goes. It's rolling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Tom Hanks, oh, what a, such a wonderful person to work for. Like he just he's he's every ounce the America's father you think he is. And yeah, super heartfelt, awesome person. Yeah, I don't know if you young folks would remember him when he first started out on a show called Bosom Buddies. Oh, dude, I watch that all the time. Awesome I show. show. I loved it. Yep. Yep. Peter Scolari, oh. Amy Jo Sperber, one of my favorite actresses of all time. Yeah. Oh, I think it's it rolling around like The Clay movie he did was almost immediately after that. Um, Splashing. Uh, oh, no, the, the, the one when he was dancing in FAO Schwartz on the piano. Yeah. Big. Yes, big. big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I watch a lot of movies. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is great. I mean, look at that. I mean, so who is controlling it? You know... I was hired to control it, but on, on Ghostbusters, when we were driving the RTV, so the, the trap that drives around, um, 
I realized that like I didn't have the chops they wanted because they literally were we were doing like 40, 50 miles an hour down a road. And uh, there was one point where they wanted to launch up into a ramp on the back, sort of a, a Knight Rider style um, into the Ecto. And there's no way I could do it. So I reached out to my friends on Facebook and um, a friend of mine said, well, my, my brother used to, to race RC Pro and, uh, you know, maybe you should get a hold of him. And it, this guy is amazing. He it, it's funny because the stress he has, he gets really quiet, but he's there's a thing in the sorry i'm gonna go off a little tangent here but there's a thing in the movies called a oneer and a oneer is is that you got the shot that they wanted the first try and that's it they're good now i've had two oneers in my entire career granted it's not that long it's been like six eight years something like that but he got like you know 15 on ghostbusters because he's that good you tell him exactly where you want things and he does it every time like a robot so I figured, you know, this is for Tom Hanks. It's live. I'm not going to risk this screwing up. So I'm going to offload all that stress to my buddy, Mike. <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So I've got, yeah, I've got a, a guy that's like a puppeteer slash radio control guy that, uh, that, yeah, I go to every time. That makes sense. That that's, yeah. that's the right way of doing it. Yeah. And yeah, I could do it in a pinch. I choose not to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks like you did everything else right. Um, and uh, I think our on shape uh, listeners will be really excited to hear that that model is actually available uh, as an on shape document. Yeah, it totally yeah. is. You can, Public yeah, you document. can yeah, and you get everything, including the, the guts to it, like what runs the whole thing in the background yep. is this little guy here. And it's like some servos and everything on a rotating motor and your receiver. This is a little more complex than like you know the mechanics of it are really solid you could throw in a continuous rotation servo and a regular servo and be fine and not have to worry about all the programming the programming for ourselves was you know tom wanted him to land face up every time and it's a lot harder than you'd think <laughs> but you know it can be solved quickly with uh there are some some servos you can get that have rotary encoders in them so you tell them this is up and you hit a switch and it goes to up and yeah that made life a whole lot easier <laughs> Now, Ben, will you get involved with with the circuit design and, and things like that with these uh, types of projects? Um, sometimes I, I find that like I'm I'm dangerous enough that on the fly and I have to MacGyver it on set. Yes. Um, if it's something that I want to be robust and fully programmed out, then I will hire somebody. And I got the um, the guy who made the Sphero robot or the little BB-8 toy that everybody saw. Um, yeah, I ended up uh, going again. This is one of those things where if you're in engineering or something like that, build your network and talk to everybody, make friends with everybody because you never know. And it turns out that a guy that I get, buy my robot supplies or a lot of my servos and stuff from knows, knows Ian who made the Sphero robot, put us in touch and and then, you know, he cracked that one off for me. Um, again, it's, you always feel like it's, I don't do everything. I do a lot of the mechanical stuff, but in the end, the electronics is, I, if I can offload it, I will. Um, if I have to do it on site, I can. But it's it's a stress I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm hearing like, so a lot of your ideas come from maker spaces. Networking is extremely important. Yes. You know, the, these are these are really important uh, skills for for whoever's looking to enter the engineering space, I think, to to understand. I think it's it's helped Richard. I think it's helped me. Right. Yep. You know, all, I mean, you know, Richard, you're all about networking. You know, yeah, I think I've been I've been mentioning it once or twice over the past, <laughs> I don't know, 22 years or so. That <laughs> networking is something that can really help advance your career. Uh, yeah. And not only that, but it gives you a chance to meet some really wonderful people like Ben. Yeah. Here. Yep. Wow. I don't know. I'm just I'm just another guy that happened to show up at a restaurant to get some free appies one day. <laughs> yeah, hey. <laughs> well, I, I, I have to say, I think it worked out pretty well for you, man. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, hey, but yeah, you no. know, it, it's funny. You talk. Everybody talks about engineering and the CAD tools and stuff, and they are they're awesome and they are amazing tools. But for me, I find the where you can get the most bang for the buck is the people, and yeah. so you know. Unfortunately, most most engineering types, I know I'm a bit of an anomaly. I'm, I'm a bit of a people person, but most of my friends that in engineering, you know, would rather be in a closed office and no one ever bothers them so they can just run the numbers and look at pretty models. And 
you know, that's that's where they're going to be stuck unless they start to reach out. So what I'm trying to say, though, is just reach out. Even if it's uncomfortable, you know, go to conferences and meet people. It's it's, it's huge. And, and, well, and, and, and frankly, I think that's why, you know, three people on the screen have gotten to where they've gotten into the in this industry because of the people that we've met and the chance yeah. that we've had to meet these people. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I guess a lot of folks don't get the kind of opportunities that we get, whether it be conferences or user group meetings hmm. uh, or don't take the kind of opportunities that we get. Maybe they, maybe they do get those opportunities. They're just reluctant to take them. Um, you know, a great place to start is your local user group meeting. Well, beyond that, too, is even online user group meetings. Yep. You know, there's there's all sorts of online conferences now. You know, the pandemic, maybe not the best, but it's definitely pushed the whole online and live stuff quite a bit and i yeah well our, our on shape user groups are 100 percent online we have a meeting every two weeks uh different topics every two weeks we've got some yep. great presenters and folks should certainly sign up for those they're free and you know we always start those meetings 15 minutes early too so yeah. people get a chance to come in say hi get to know each other a little bit and oh. we're not we're not technically face to face but you know we're online we've got cameras everybody's faces are shown in these meetings so um you know it's the next best thing to meeting somebody in person yeah. Well, yeah. if you live in a flyover state or in a small town in the middle of nowhere, this is this is definitely better than what you got at home, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, two hours driving home at night from a music hands. group. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> those, those are it. Those are it. Yeah, oh, well, wow. this is this is like one of the prototypes here. Go here, and what I it, it's funny because it's very quickly become a fidget toy. So a lot of this is like you know I I see and see some of these arms, but. 3D printed fingertips, and then even the gears. Let's see if we can get the light in there properly. Yeah, I can see but, it. Yeah, yep. yeah. Even the gears are 3D printed. Even split collars. Just I wanted something to prove this would work mechanically before we spent money on it. But what I'm getting to is, is that now when you do this, it's like this fidget toy. It's, it's <laughs> it, it looks very like, satisfying. Yeah. Well, there was there was one night where I was thinking about it, and I was watching TV, and I you know my my office is in my house. And so I went downstairs, I grabbed this and I sitting up at the TV doing this it, it have, like after, uh, I don't know, an hour. Or so she's like, oh, my God, like this thing. She's like, <laughs> why don't you put that thing down? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It looks pretty smooth, though. The motion is uh, it there's is. no jerky motion yeah. at all. It looks nice and smooth. The new the new fidget spinner or pet rock or well, the next big this thing. This would this this fidget spinner <laughs> yeah. could like pinch and cut off things if you. Not yeah, I might have to go through a safety review, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, you know what? This is <laughs> a funny story. I was at, I was at a hardware store a while back, and I was picking up like a oh, heck, what was it? oh, with some sprinkler valves and stuff like that. And the guy's like, yeah, you know, we got a warranty and everything on this. And you want to buy an extended warranty? And I started laughing. I'm like, dude, <laughs> the second I drive off your lot, I'm disabling every safety feature this thing has. And I'm literally making a cannon. I don't think you're going <laughs> to want to take it back. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, Ben, I think we've had a great discussion here. This has been Awesome. I love these stories. So, so many of the things you, that you've made can be seen Wednesday Adams. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that show, the Star Trek yeah. beyond, you know, the, the Wilson ball. I mean, these are great stories and, uh, and we're so happy that you were able to join us for the show today. I'm happy. Uh, we'll, we'll put, yeah, we'll put a link to, uh, to some of the videos that we talked about so you can mm -hmm. watch them in their entirety. And, uh, yep. you know, if there's a, I think, you know, if we, if that on shape model is uh, available for, for oh, the, the yep. internal guts of uh, Wilson there, we'll, we'll put a link to that as well. So <laughs> first thing I did when I opened it up, I went to the assembly and did a section view because I wanted to see what was inside it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And the one thing is, okay. So anybody that's looking at this model, please forgive me, but this is, you got to understand the world I live in is not the final product, right? right. It, it's everything I do is R and D. So all my models are sloppy and instead of working out parametrics and stuff, I might be in a rush and I'll just push or pull a face and that works and then forget about it. And then I'll export it into a dumb solid. So I don't get confused by the feature yeah. tree. And the, <laughs> it, so yeah, the, 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 what you see in on shape is literally sort of Ben's brain blowing up onto the, into the ones and zeros <laughs> on my computer, but it's not pretty, but it's, it's who I am. And I'm, I'm tired of, hiding from it i think a lot of people could do well to go look you know this is this is the way we we work and 
move forward with that and just accept it instead of instead of trying to hide it or cover it up. It, yep. it life becomes easier that way. Yeah, uh, I think the old adage is true. Just get her done. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, this is this has been fantastic. I mean, we came here, I, I thought, to talk about Tom Hanks and, <laughs> and, and the volleyball. And we've learned all of these other great things about you, Ben, and some of these great projects that you've worked on. Um, yeah. Just amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Thank you. Um, I, I'm glad we had that dinner back in 2007. I'm glad to have met you and I'm glad that you showed up and, uh, and appeared on our show here. It's been, been really fantastic. Yeah, no, for sure. I, anytime. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you around Ben. looking forward to seeing your next product in the next motion picture and, uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have some fun. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,